Hey everybody, here we are at the Frontside offices in Austin, and I was talking with my uh, buddy Charles here about what we were thinking the, the, the Spudnik profile tool would be like, how it works. And uh, I, I just wanted, I thought rather than just talking about it, we should do a video so we can share it with everybody. So, Fantastic. so it's sort of, it, you, you were kind of the, uh, the origin of more than just some foggy notion of what this is. So I think you have a good, a good uh, vision, if you will, of, of what you want this tool to be like. So why don't you tell us? All right. Well, um, so we'll start by saying that it's, it's definitely rough and, you know, yeah. I'm still in the, in the process of forming it in my own head, but as a developer, I know that I, I like to have a lot of control uh, over, over my environment. I spent hours tweaking. In fact, I remember like uh, well, it becomes 10 a years ago, yeah, it, becomes, it becomes a hobby after some point. Although nowadays I don't spend uh, 20 hours trying to configure like a, a dashboard of 12 by 12 pixel. You might have like uh, a 30 by 30. Yeah. You might have <laughs> well, my eyes are getting, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, <clears throat> whenever you get a new laptop or whenever you get involved in some new area of development, there's always this huge overhead that you pay for, for, for setup, especially when it's especially when it's new, but anytime you want to... And to, in the server world for provisioning and configuring your lap, your not your laptop, your server. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Um, well, but even when you're, like, when I'm setting up my development, if I need to have WebSphere or I need to have, right. um, you know, this particular LibXML2 or, or, or something like that uh, as part of a grander... Um, uh, development environment, there's always a bunch of uh, setup there. Um, and so you want to minimize that. And a lot of, you know, my conception of it actually uh, uh, stems from a, so a, a project uh, that I've used before in the past called Pivotal Workstation, uh -huh. which is for, it's for OS X. Uh, but what it is is a set of chef recipes for doing anything you could possibly want for development, um, including real, actually anything that you can, you can, Want for, for, for managing your uh, machine at all, but it's it's uh, targeted specifically it's targeted targeted yeah. workstations, uh, and the idea is that you have um, a chef repository of recipes that are specific for configuring uh, your laptop, not for installing individual programs or installing individual libraries, but installing them in big blocks. Right. Uh, that that. Are meaningful at the, the the systems development level, so that if I'm developing something, I'm going to need an IDE. I'm going to need uh, plugins for that IDE. I'm going to need interpreters. I'm going to need right. And then uh, that's and the stuff. Thing, like, I might need I might need you know holes in my firewall or something like that's that. That's the thing with programming. It's not just like you install Office and you have everything you need. Right. There's, there's, always a bunch of different things that you need to not only get and install, but you need to have configure them to work together. Right. I might need a web server. I might need right. uh, 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 oh, port 3000 open right, uh, right. to the to the internet or something like that. So there's like, so so there's programs, libraries, plus configuration um, to, to, to actually get up and running. Uh, but the, and so right now, this is a very manual process uh, and, and we spend hours getting this right. set up for ourselves. Yeah, you were saying it one, one person you took two days to yeah, like just get yeah. up and running with, when, they be, when they were a new developer on a team. Right, if you're a new developer on a team, it's like there's all this kind of encoded knowledge that's just yeah. spreads organically from via osmosis from one developer's machine to another as the system grows. Yeah. And so the idea is to be able to encode that, to, to actually make that code that's under source control uh, that, that you can control. Right. Um, at the machine so level. So we've got that ins kind of set up. I mean, the idea is, well, I don't know, you paint the video, like, so you sit down at the laptop, right? Right. At the Sputnik laptop, and right. like, what, what is it that you start doing? So it seems to me that the first thing, um, the first thing that you, um, well, the, the, the question is, would you, like, when you, when you open the box? Well, not starting from the box, right. although that, that can be fun too, but like, right. I mean like... You just basically want to select, you're yeah, saying, yeah. you know what, I'm going to do like Rails development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it'll go and it'll get RVM, right, for, so you can, you can use, you can easily control uh, what uh, Ruby version, man, Ruby right. version you want to use. Um, it'll get all the, the packages that are necessary, like OpenSSL and um, all the things that um, are required to build Ruby, and uh, you know it'll install 
ruby gems if you don't have all that's that's taken by taken well, you know, I, by, I mean probably it'll, now, now it'll install maybe textmate or sorry sublime text and now that you're going, now that you're going like that. it could also be that the profile that you get if we want to call them profiles mm -hmm. could specify all of that stuff so it could be I mean, there's sort of infinite combinations for the different things you would need. Right. right? So you need, you definitely need building blocks, and that was actually my and, next but, thing. But is it, like, it I might be, want to use RBMB instead of RBM. And yeah, and you could also or, say like, not only is this like I might want to use Vim instead of Emacs. Not only is this a Rails setup, but this is kind of like the Rails setup for working on this narrow type of thing. So maybe it would be a good analogy or a good touch point to say like, uh, like oftentimes on open source projects, and this happens on mm -hmm. commercial. You know, closed source projects, but open source projects, there's kind of like the manifesto of how you need to set up your development environment right. to work right. on this code base. Right. And you could almost set up a profile that was like installed that for you, right? right. That like, yeah, no, no. I could ima easily imagine open source projects, like if you wanted to develop on Apache Zookeeper or something yeah. like that, they could provide some recipe that would work with Sputnik, and it would be like, you know what, just run this recipe and. Brrr, there you go. Not only does it you're set up to develop it together. Right, exactly. Yeah. So you've got all the dependencies and you've got them all talking to each other. Right. Uh, uh, something like that. And but and, and but but taking a, a step back, you can also just for it seems to me you can you can have it at uh, whatever level of granularity yeah. uh, that you want. So you could have recipes for installing IntelliJ, right? That's what I use for development. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Java development. And but inside that you could have recipes for installing diff and configuring different plugins, like how I want uh, JRevel to behave, and right. how you know I could even have a recipe for um, how I how um, I want my my colors themes. Yeah. To, or or to look. if you want real tabs or spaces. Right. Or do, you know here's the for for you know anybody out there using IntelliJ for some reason they have this default where you can put the cursor at the end of the like past the end of the line. Uh, it's the most worthless default setting. I would make that always off. And it's one of the first things I do yeah. whenever I upgrade IntelliJ or I do like new DUT files, I have to go turn that yeah, off. Yeah. And that's not something that I can be like, well, I need to have IntelliJ. Right, it's a little right. bit more. It's like this is this is customization. Yeah, it's sort of like, like a, a build tool for your developer environment. Yeah, Because right? exactly. a, a build tool will set up your final application and do all this staging. Right. And, and it can just be a bunch of... That, right? right, it can be a bunch of variables and configuration of how you want it to do so that you could actually write a recipe, but something like... The, right. you share the recipe, but that would be something that would be configured right, right, you know, right, right, right. For, for, for you. And if you use Chef, you know that's exactly how it works, is you have these recipes, but then there's configuration variables that you can put inside of the recipe to, to, to shape the way it'll right. will, will behave. So that, that's sort of like the laptop side. And then what's like, like we've also been talking about like storing all this in GitHub, if you will, mm -hmm. or, or you know, cloud service. But right. like having it stored in some central repository somewhere. So it's not just like, emailing around a pastebin URL that has something you cut and paste. But right, right. So that would each, all of the recipes would be stored up in the um, in the, the some canonical repository. Just right. like just like if you go to um, to to workstation. Yeah. Uh, you know, all the all the, the chef recipes are right there and you can fork them. You can use your you can fork their repository, you can add your own recipes, you can contribute stuff back. And, and then how do you think that would work with like like if so, so if someone had the uh, Charles's IntelliJ Java setup, right? right? Like, what do you think the process would be like if someone like forked that, and then how would you merge well, it back or not? Or like, um, so so the question is is how do you want to? Um, I, I guess the question is how do you want that? that there, there's there's a number of ways that uh, you could go. I mean, you could just add my fork as you know some place that provides recipes or something like that. Although I don't know if you have like uh, collisions um, right. over there or you know, you could just use, you could just, uh, you know, copy my commits over into your own, your own fork, or right, right, right. you know, you could submit a pull request and have it go back to the. So the, the thing it, on it, it mean, that, that's the part that's nice about GitHub is, in theory, it would be easy for people contributing to basically. It's a lot easier to contribute if we're willing to accept their request, right? Yeah, and, absolutely. And we, we would just fold it in there, and, and in fact, we could kind of track like the popularity of the of different different profiles right. and forks. Right. Right. And, and see about uh, pulling them in. And hopefully yeah. that the, 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 the quality of the, yeah. the recipes get um, better over time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because, because they've got a lot of eyes, they've got a lot of people. Like, like, and also, like we were joking about, like there's, maybe not all developers are like this, but many developers enjoy you know infinite configuring loops. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, like, I mean, I remember like sharing Emacs dot, you know, dot Emacs files was a big, uh, a right. big hobby for right. people. I guess right. it still is. Yep. But uh, <laughs> lemonade, it's yeah, it's a delicious drink, and it still is. And and you know, I th that would, that's another fun part is being able to share all of your configurations and everything, and uh, and 
you know, have, have like the, right. The, you don't have to Charles describe it. You don't have to describe it to somebody. You don't have to, uh, <clears throat> you don't have to, to put it in a gist or a, a pasty or something like that and be like, follow this or look, browse it on the internet. No, you've got code. You can actually yeah, run. Yeah, you can actually execute it. Right. And if it doesn't work, then you can make a fix to it and you can contribute back and so right. the next person who does it, uh, it, it might, it might run. But the beauty of it is, is Sputnik is running on known hardware, known operating system. Yeah, yeah. And so that's actually why I think this hasn't been uh, uh, as popular before. It's like work, with Workstation, you know that you're running on OS X. Like, right, right. So it's, they it's can a very make, constrained system. Yeah, it's you very constrained, so you can make a lot of assumptions about it. And I think there's an opportunity to do the exact same thing right. here. And so people are willing, I think on the server side, just because there's so much more invested and you've got you know systems that are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, people are willing to put up with all these idiosyncrasies of individual hardware and operating systems yeah, yeah. when they're developing their, their recipes because they're really developing one-off bespoke recipes for their production system or their yeah. system. Um, and so, but the, the same's not true for the, the, the desktop and for right. the workstation. And so... Um, it, it, it always seems like on paper it's, it's uh, a cost savings to have the individual spend all their time doing right, it rather than to right. solve it for... Uh, Lots of individuals. Right, right. But if you've got uniform hardware, uniform operating system, then you can actually, uh, you can actually do that. I think it, and you can you can reduce the cost of of, yeah. of the actual system that, that that does this. And so I, I think it's a natural progression, right? We've conquered the, the the problem of configuration management, or we're well on our way for for the cloud. Why not? Why not? Uh, why not bring it back our, to the, Why not bring it back point. to our desktop? That's right. Yeah, well, great. Well, that that was I think that's a that was a nice layout of like the the high level thing that we're looking we're shooting for. I mean, now we just need to make it.